Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this, the October 23rd edition of Beyond the Headlines. My name is Colin Dow, and I'll be serving as your guide through this evening's conversation. And we're going to grapple with something that has been very topical, not only merely because we are in the month of October, but always has been on the minds and certainly on the lips of many Grenadians. Um, the Grenada Revolution and its impact 40 years later, that's what we're going to be grappling with with over the next 90 minutes. And in studio, I have an esteemed panel of resourceful individuals. Um, I deliberately go from my left and ask them to introduce themselves, and if they so desire, the capacity within which they sit this evening. I'm very former trade unionist, former member of the Senate. I think I did 30 years, I was just correcting. It is 23 consecutive years. <laughs> as a Labour representative, and then when I came back in 2014, I came back as President of the Senate. I was elected President of the Senate and served those two terms. Okay. Right, so it's almost 30 years that I've been in the... Well, everybody know me, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Rosa Malas? No. <laughs> I'm tempted to tell you that a sexist term, but <laughs> never mind. The Rose is a sexist term. <laughs> Gender's loaded. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my name is Gloria Payne Banfield, and I have been a public worker for some 32 years. Um, I retired at the age of 56, so I could have gone on for four more years if I was inclined to. But I didn't opt for retirement, you know, it was just a time to go sort of thing. And I served, I think, uh, seven prime ministers. And I always believe that a public worker should be neutral. Mm -hmm. So loyalty is loyalty to Grenada not to the government you're serving or the prime minister you're serving or whatever it is, loyalty to the country you belong to and to its constitution. Excellent. Terence Marshall, medical doctor trained in Cuba, uh, former political leader of the now defunct Mars Bishop Patriotic Movement, and I call myself a political activist and a member of the Morris Bishop on October 19th Martyrs Foundation and representative of the families of the victims of that period. Okay. All right. Um, our first question really will be one of a quick round. So I'll give you each a couple of sentences to just respond to. Why do we give so much attention to this very short period in Grenada's history? The revolution is merely four and a half years, but yet still it seems to be just so topical. Why is that, Chester? Well, I, I think because of the nature and character of it and what it represented, um, Grenada has had actually one, two, three, four, four historical high points in our entire history since that history has been recorded from the time um, Columbus sighted and from the time the Europeans and the French came. The first hot high point was the battle in Satyrs against our Aboriginal forefathers, where the French waged a war of genocide in order to steal the territory of Grenada from the Aborigines. The last stand was what we call Leapers Hill. But the history has been distorted in that they jumped over, and, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, the second high point was the, well, if you want to call it the first revolution of 1795, the Federalist Revolution. And the main achievement of that revolution is that it abolished slavery more than all, approximately 40 years before the British Act of Parliament, 
when Fedor and his forces um, took control of the country, Fedor um, um, liberated all of the slaves, and the slaves joined him. In fact, his second in command, a gentleman by the name of Chardon, who we have anglicized to call Shadow, was actually captured after the Federalists were defeated. So that's the second high point. The third high point is the 1951 proletarian revolution, um, which dealt with dismantling certain post-slavery structures, which still remain. It was a deep social revolution, all right, and it shaped Grenada's history going forward. And, and, and the fourth high point, um, if you want to call it that, is the 1979 um, People's Revolution, which again, by its social content, um, and, and, and did a number of things, and we can go into that um, as the discussion. So I think that's the reason why it is that topical, because it's the last in the chain of revolutionary movements of the Grenadian people in a quest for social justice. Okay. Gloria? Um, I think that the Grenada Revolution came at a time when we thought we had gotten rid of colonialism. We were independent, and you hear everybody say, we thought. And that um, we had come to a point where we wanted more than just colonialism, um, anti-colonial feelings. We wanted to feel like we wanted to identify. Um, I think people recognize the fact that 1974 was a watershed, yes, in terms of the relationship between the English or the British uh, colonial power um, and, the, and, and, the, and the nation of Grenada. But somewhere along the line, the, the nation of Grenada was not uh, strong enough in terms of national identity. And they, they had to be determined, the self-determination, uh, self-determinism had to be, be um, uh, what you say, illustrated or felt in a deeper way. Um, not to justify the revolution, at that at that time, and that's not what I'm trying to do. All I'm saying is that it was, and therefore, this is why, and it was also the the first country, the first English-speaking country to have had that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, we had had Haiti in 1804, and that was fairly, you know, mind-boggling for the French. Because they ne never expected that. And <laughs> what was quite interesting to that uh, somebody, I uh, was it Toussaint Louverture that they declared himself king of Haiti. So they 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 were anti monarchists and yet still they were taking on a semblance of monarchy and the same thing that they were trying to get away from in the, with the French. But I think that that to some extent our revolution was different. Okay. Terry? Well, I would say basically because it was the first time in the English-speaking Caribbean that a government was thrown out of power in this way when the people really, you know, had become tired of the status quo and were led by a vanguard party at the time that had a, a very charismatic leader that people trusted and, and loved, and rose up and for the first time in their lives, they began to participate in a way that no other time in their history, they, they, they were given that opportunity to do so. And the way uh, they participated for the four and a half years where people were actually involved in the decision-making process at a time when they were just getting into the real business of governing themselves in what we call um, in a participatory process. 
it imploded. And imploded in such a way when they were not ready for that implosion. And because of that, it has left a scar on, on the minds of people. Um, it has left a lot of questions that are yet to be answered. Mm -hmm. And so, because of that, it's, it's still on the minds of people. Unfortunately, a lot of the young people are not privy to all of the information surrounding that particular period. But I will say for those of us who participated in that time, those of us who are now in our uh, 60s and you know 70s. 70s, Terry, 70s. No, I'm saying 60s and 70s. <laughs> um, who actually lived through that period um, still feel a kind of kingship, a sort of identification well, let, to that let's, particular let's period. Let's get into the, the, the conversation. Um, Gloria, let me start off with you in terms of the question. Um, when you think of the revolution and you reflect on today's Grenada, what comes front of mind in terms of first thing to pop in, in, uh, as you reflect on the legacy of the revolution 40 years later? Hmm. There are so many things that come to mind. Um, the word freedom is a very interesting word. As you know, you have freedom to and freedom from. And I think that some or the other, we lost our way because the revolution was supposed to have given us freedom from. But it seemed as if the revolution perpetuated some of the things that we were trying to get away from. And I want to see that without, I hope not I offend anybody, but you see this business about arresting people and putting them in jail without try, charging them? That's bad. That should not be done. And I think that during the revolution, there were 3,112 people who were so treated. That should have been a no-no. Right. And l let's go, because we're going to delve back a little bit. But, but just as we, first of all, embrace some of the, the things that are still within our society, which really is the legacy of uh, the revolution, what comes to mind, if anything? And that's where I was going with this one. What comes to mind in terms of the legacy of the... the, the lasting legacy, sustainable, lasting, um, sustainable things that would have come out of the revolution. I am tempted to quote from Wordsworth. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive and to be young again, heaven. In short, there was a certain feeling uh, to me mm -hmm. in that time of, of freedom too. Although I was asked when I came back to Grenada, because I had gone with a delegation to the UN with the former prime minister. And when I came back, I was asked by one of the comrades, How would you like three months in Richmond Hill? And I said to him, what for? He said, well, you know, you can't come and say you're a civil servant, and you, 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 you had to go in and serve your time. I said, what for? I kept asking him, what for? Because this idea of incarcerating people without charge, was there all the time, hanging over the revolution as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Chester, let me come to you. As we think of President Day Grenada, what are some of the things that you see within our society that is part of the legacy of the revolution? Well, first of all, there are some institutional issues. Um, we talk about the national insurance scheme. And I can give you a version of how that occurred. Um, 
you talk about that, well, the marketing board has been dismantled now, but that was uh, part of the legacy. An expanded the, version, because I want us to keep the truth. Marketing board was formed in 1973. 1973. And yes, expanded but totally upon. reorganized. Totally reorganized, conceptualized differently. Um, mm -hmm. when, when what existed, the caricature of a marketing board existed, it was in deep financial difficulty, disorganized, um, really. Um, and it, what, what the PRG introduced was some com completely revolutionary and different. So because it was, it was primarily. Let, let, yeah. let's, let's be clear. Yeah, because make fit, fit for purpose. But, yeah, but, but over as time. I say, what, what existed before it, immediately before the new MNIB came into being, mm -hmm. was really a hodgepodge of disorganization with no serious conceptualization or structures. This MNIB. It, well, has, a second. Is, that, is that factual? Or is it that it outlived its usefulness and therefore was necessarily revamped? Well, whichever way you put it. I mean, that is a debate in itself, which I don't think we have the time for. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, MNIB right. as, as re-engineered, right. um, because I would admit that there was a marketing board before, but I'm saying conceptually, they were vastly different. Right. Because the focus of MNIB was marketing. Towards that end, um, they had a shipping division and a ship of, with, with cold storage ship, the Albatross, was actually purchased. And the name MNIB was not chosen by mistake. It was the way of um, revolutionizing our agriculture, taking it out of the doldrums and the disorganization and the disintegration uh, as the last element of plantation economy and putting it and putting it on a good footing. So the focus was on marketing, right? Not on retail business, as it ultimately became a retail business and again lost a lot of money um, after the revolution collapsed and so on until ultimately really it, it is what it is. So I'm thinking about that and of course the international airport was 80% um, or 85% completed at the point of the invasion and again the international airport while it physically is a legacy of the revolution but it's reflective of the deep thinking and planning of the revolution in terms of transforming the Grenada economy from a backward plantation economy into a modern service economy and, and, to, and to leverage um, the, 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 the advantages that Grenada had its beauty, its unspoiled nature, its spices, the preservation of its environment and to leverage all of that and to bring Grenada into the modern economy, service economy by building this infrastructure, the international airport, mm -hmm. right? Because that was the transformational drive to, to as, as Morris would say, the international airport will do for Grenada what the railways did for the United States when they had the, the Western expansion, right? So it shows com a comprehensive economic approach, deep thinking of, 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 a transform, of a transforming of the economy, an understanding of where the Grenada economy is, the challenges that it faced, and what we had to do in order to create the material basis for tackling poverty and balance. Awkwardness. Why was the revolution able to accomplish so much in such little time? Well, first of all, it was the drive. It was an attempt, as I say, to um, transform the country. We were clear on what that mission was. We were clear on the economic measures that need to be taken in order to get there, all right? Um, and although, although we had a socialist transformative outlook, essentially we were doing things, we were just managing the economy along the path of non-capitalist development but using a lot of the features, right? So, for example, we engaged the, 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 the multilateral international system for financing, the World Bank and others. At one point, the IMF said that we were too qualified to get some of the loans, right? But, um, so I'm saying that, that in short, I mean, I don't want to hog the program, but that in short are the key things. And the final thing is this, um, which I agonize about, the loss of our identity. 
under the revolution, a Grenadian identity took hold. And that identity was internationally recognized. Grenada had a place on the international stage as it never had before. Let me ask you and this. I've never regained it since. Let me ask you this. So you, would you say that as we look at the accomplishments in the four and a half years, one can point to our people as a reason for the development and absolutely, the development. Absolutely, the okay. national unity which existed, Grenadians in the diaspora. I mean, when the international airport was launched, ordinary Grenadians put their money, they bought bonds outside. Local Grenadians, housewives, formed committees. Let me you ask know, you that, this. That spirit of togetherness, that would spirit you, of a national see? feeling, that spirit of pride mm -hmm. came to us as a people as never before. But you say that the philosophy was also responsible. In other words, you said whereas there was a socialist movement, you embraced even the capitalistic institutions. So would you say the philosophy and the outlook was also a reason why you were, the revolution was able to be successful? Patriotic nationalism. Patriotic In other nationalism. words, it's not a backward nationalism, but a patriotic nationalism, which found expression. All of the community centers, which were built under the revolution, and most of the community centers in Grenada were built then, were built by voluntary labor. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you also say that the lack of democracy was also responsible for the achievements during the four and a half years? Well, it depends on how you describe democracy because there were features of profound democracy in Grenada at the time, although there were contradictions, I, I must admit. It depends on how you define democracy. If you define democracy in a very limited way, as Westminster democracy and what we practice, and once every five years people go to the poll, and after that, that's it. Um, yes, but if if you look at the experiments which went to the parish councils and the zonal councils and the strengthening of the trade union movement and the mass um, organization of women, the national women's organization, the strength of the trade union movement, and, and what happened there? I was That's not going form of democracy. I was not going in terms of elections, um, but I was well, going. I didn't touch that. I'm no, just no, saying. All right. So, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. But I'm going to Gloria's point of over 3,000 people being detained. Yes. That being over your head can be a motivational factor. No, no. Well, well, yes and no, but no, no, no. You have to understand, and, and, and that's, that's a negative part of the revolution, no doubt. So there's no need to debate that. I'll concede that right away. But you have always to remember the context. And the context was that the Grenada Revolution took place in the height of the Cold War, in the height of two systems contending against each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as a result, Grenada found itself in that Cold War atmosphere. And the fact that the Americans ultimately invaded this country, broke international law, and came here on the basis of a lie. No medical students were threatened. That's not untrue. Right? But they expanded their forces. They didn't take the medical students and go. They came here, fought, killed a number of Grenadians, including Cubans, right? And had their forces occupy Grenada for more than a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying the context is important. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying, um, and I'm just laying out the factual matrix of, of what happened. I'm not casting a moral judgment that it was wrong or it was right. I admit that there were features in the Grenadian experiment that were wrong. I mean, I, I can see that right away. Mm -hmm. um, Terry, let me just come over to you. And what did the revolution mean for people? Because I think this was a, a central point, um, people and people's development. Well, I think the whole, <clears throat> the whole particip um, process of participating for the first time in their lives in this decision-making process over the four and a half years gave them a new sense of identity um, in, in running the country. Just alluded to the, the whole question of the national pride and patriotism that people developed during, during that period. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they saw so many benefits coming to them. And just be specifically in terms of what it meant for poor people, what it meant for um, people in rural areas, what it meant th in through education. Just right. in terms so, of so mm -hmm. first of all, we can point to the Center for Popular Education, which addressed the whole question of illiteracy in the country, mm -hmm. where young people or going to the homes of elderly people who never had the opportunity to read and write in their lifetime. 
um, who were deprived of that because they might have had to you know, bear children and raise children. The revolution concentrated on educating those people. So young people went to their houses and taught them how to read and write. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go, go to the bank, they can now sign a check, they can now carry out transactions that they couldn't do before. The rural economy benefit from, from agriculture with the establishment of the agro-industries. So the farmers and, 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 and the workers in, on, on the plantations for the first time now had a ready market for all of their produce. Imagine having something like that where you know you don't have to worry about you know marketing it. The, the, the market was there. You know the agro industries was producing high quality jams and and jellies and all kinds of nice nicely canned foods that yes. that um, when, when we exported them, even the trade agents would say these guys in Grenada are crazy because they would dilute one can of mango nectar and it still tasted out of juice. juice and still tasted as good as anything else. Mm -hmm. So for, for the rural economy, it played a, a major role in putting money into the pockets of, of, of people on a, on a regular basis in terms of unemployment, um, unemployment. The unemployment level dropped considerably from well over 60% um, to about 12 by the time the revolution um, collapsed, which meant that more people in, in a household in the rural areas as well were, were employed at, at any one time. So the economy flourished as a, as a result of, of all of this. Um, then the sons and daughters of, of poor people who never had opportunity to send their children abroad to study were not given that opportunity to go and study in, in, in various countries like Cuba, the Soviet Union, East Germany, and, and many other countries. And so that impact that it had during that time is something that is palpable. You, you, you can't forget it. In fact, the, we're talking about legacy. The country runs on the largest of the, the revolution. Chester mentioned the, the international airport. I can tell you that in almost every sphere of development in the country, every ministry, the people who have run these ministries for the last 20 years, 30, 30. 30 years, are graduates from that, that particular period. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the Ministry of Health, whether it is uh, the Ministry of Education, in, in the teaching industry. I mean, many of the permanent secretaries uh, are from that period. Okay. So uh, that is the, the kind of largesse that we, 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 have, we have seen, and, and the, con the, the country continues to run on that because of the impact the, the revolution has had. Has had. Mm -hmm. um, Gloria, anybody? let me um, just ask you, why is Morris Bishop considered such a larger-than-life individual in your mind? In my mind? Yes, uh, because yes, in your mind, because you would have observed what's taking place in Grenada and among Grenadians. So I know Gloria may have an opinion, but I don't think you'll deny that he is considered almost a larger than life figure in Grenada. Well, I, I don't know. I, first of all, before I answer that question, <laughs> let me take on something that Chester said. Do you mind if I call you oh, Chester definitely. and not no, Senator no, Humphrey? No, no, no. <laughs> no, we go back too many years for that. I mean, no, no. And you're not much older than me anyway. So. We're not going to debate, debate age. Go ahead, Gloria. <laughs> no, you talked about the international airport, and I do concede that it was made a reality by the revolution. But that is not to say that the seeds were not put down for an international airport by the Gary government. Mm -hmm. And this is what I have to say. Mm -hmm. The land on which the airport is built is a Point Salina estate. That was acquired before the revolution. Mm -hmm. And it was acquired for an international airport. The plans for the navigational aids for the international airport were laid and negotiated with Plessy, the company, the British company did, before the revolution. So that when the revolution came in, it was just a matter of land is there, it has been acquired already, the government was paying for it, they hadn't finished paying for it, but the plans were there. All the plans were there. It was just to implement it. So much to the, the, to the uh, credit of the revolution, they implemented what was laid down. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Land okay. was acquired. The plans were there for the Navy Eats. All right. And with the NIS, all the forms for the NIS was printed already. When I say the forms, the paperwork was printed by the printry already because the ILO was doing this project throughout the, the region. Much to the credit of the revolution, they introduced in that legislation for the NIS a clause about maternity leave. And I always say, all the other islands who did the same NIS together don't have it. We have it. Because the, rec the revolution recognized the right of women to spend three months with their child before they could go back out to work. So you have to put the credit to, to, it, to them. Okay. All right. It is actually time for our first break. So I, first break, I, and no, we'll be right back. The first break, I no, we, we'd have to take the break I and wanted, we'll be back. I wanted to credit Christopher Columbus with the like, journey to space. <laughs> 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 Climate change is real, bringing hotter days and less rain. Less rain means less water, so it's crucial for us to conserve water at home. When washing my vehicle, I use a bucket with rain water that I have stored. This is how I save water. What are you waiting for? Hey, come closer. I want to tell you something amazing. I am, am Nexa. Nexa. And when I say Nexa, I mean more than just another financial institution. We're a family. We're a community. A community that listens and values your voice in every decision we make. Big financial decisions can be daunting, but Nexa is a strong support system here to guide you every step of the way. Nexa believes in empowerment, but you are never alone. We're, We're with, with you, you wherever, wherever your road is. is. Whether it's owning my first home, educating my kids, or starting a business, Nexa is where I am following my dreams. And here's the exciting part. You can be part of this incredible journey too. Just a join today. I am Nexa, Nexa and, and you, you can, can be too. too. We're making it even better to be a Nexa member. Ask a friend who's already a member to refer you. Our members refer someone and both of you can enjoy special rewards. It's a win-win. Call us at 440-1354. Visit us on our social media or our website for how to join. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. Corn, corn, corn! Yes, we're back! back. It's the 7th Annual Corn Festival, going down on Sunday, October 29th, at the popular Footprint Bar behind Sand. Corn will be in all forms and fashion, from Asham to Roast Corn to Boil Corn, Pay Me to Conky to Corn Soup, and much, much more! With loads of entertainment and games for everyone. So be there from 2 p.m. Because there will be loads of beach games, dominoes, maple dancing, and string band music. Mark your calendar and make sure you're part of Confest 2023 on Sunday, October 29th at Footprint Bar, Lauriston, Kerry Our partners for this event are the Grenada Tourism Authority, the Antillian Group, Ministry of Caricou and Pity Mark Nick Affairs, National Lotteries Authority, Arisa Credit Union, Massa, Grenadine Airways Limited, and Classic Caribbean Lighted. Corn, corn, corn. Corn Fest 2023, October 29th. I'll see you there. Have you heard about the new Softweed bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers 
to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. Welcome back, viewers, and of course, we're discussing the legacy of the Grenada Revolution 40 years on. Um, Gloria, I left off with you, and uh, uh, I was asking about the why uh, Morris Bishop is perceived to be such a larger-than-life individual. Um, you didn't get to that, but you did share some facts in terms of the plans, one that was laid down prior to the revolution for the International Airport and for NIS, and quickly gave credit for the delivery because that is important. Delivery on the airport during the revolution, enhancement of the of social NIS. security mm -hmm. through NIS for the w rights of women. But let me let me ask you this, because I'm not going to go back to the, to the last question, but instead I'm going to ask, how would you compare the legacies of Morris Bishop versus Eric Gehry? Because those two are inextricably linked. And how would you compare their legacies and their contributions to this landscape that we now call Grenada? Those two had a lot in common, believe it or not. Um, this word charisma is what we use all the time. They both were charismatic. Um, Gary was a charming person, so was Morris. Um, what, I, what I personally liked about, about Morris is his sense of humor. Um, he could laugh at anything. True. Um, and, and he had such a, what you call, <coughs> a, a laughing from his guts, you know, a, a, a genuine laugh. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know, I think Grenada would have been perhaps richer and better if the two of them had worked together. Okay. Um, just so let me, let me. But uh, wait, but that was not possible because they belong to two different philosophies, I'm two different ideologies, and perhaps that is where we went wrong. Mm -hmm. Just uh, what could have happened to and for Grenada had we had four uh, more years, or four and a half more years of the revolution's uh, plans for Grenada unfolding? But I, I, um, Colin, I often think about it in my quieter moments, um, you know, I reflect. Don't forget I spent a number of years in prison, and prison imposes upon you an inward, an inward journey. And I've had time to reflect on things over the years. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we had so many brilliant plans for development of this country. Um, and all of it, you can see step by step, like a puzzle, the pieces were coming into place. When we inherited electricity, remember there were the long blackouts. We bought that electricity company, took control of it from the CDC for one dollar. We did the same thing with the banks for one dollar, okay. right? Um, and so you can have seen the strategic planning, right? And, and um, had we not um, collapsed, Grenada would be at the top of the developmental chart. Um, in the Eastern Caribbean. What were some of the things that were on the books but yet to be implemented? Well, we had plans for port construction. We had plans for significant um, structural zoning. For example, the entire Granance and Southern Peninsula was going to be was going to be earmarked exclusive for tourism development. I remember that um, the party convened several meetings to discuss the developmental plans of, of the service industry, particularly in tourism. Uh, I remember the revolution. 
contacted an international firm, the, the name slipped me now, um, to develop those plans for the Grand Dance area. They would not have been the kind of squatting and thing you see there. It would have been up end because Grenada was, it was clear, the revolution was clear that mass tourism was out. We were not going to go to Barbados model. We're going to go to upscale model in which you um, provide um, exclusive services um, for the upmarket tourism and the plans for Grand Dance and so on and the way in which it planned. Um, uh, you know, these were quite a number of things that were being done. We were going to tackle there were plans for the building of a new hospital, the training of Grenadian doctors, veterinary, and then the fishing industry was going to be a massive industry in Grenada. And this is why we introduced long line fishing. Um, uh, we, we, we got the technology from the Cubans who taught us how to build um, concrete fishing craft. We had um, fishing boats that can go out for days out on the ocean and so on and fishing. And the fishing sector was a sector um, that was planned for um, um, a major role in the transformation of the economy and addressing the whole question of poverty. And as Terry mentioned, it was a holistic approach because we realized that you could not transform agriculture unless you dealt with the problem of illiteracy. Right? So you had a mass education at all levels. And then political education. Political education that taught the masses to understand the world around you. Right? Um, um, and so it was a time of um, tremendous activism, a tremendous um, unleashing of energy. You know, the amount of doctors that we sent, Terry and others, a whole shiploads went off to Cuba, Kenya, not just socialist countries, in all fields, engineering. I mean, you, you have people like Joe Gilbert now who are doing wonders here. All of them, all of them trained in Cuba, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, at one stage, Grenada had the highest per capita level of university students in the Caribbean, higher than that of Jamaica, which had a university, higher than that of Trinidad, where UE was based. We had more students studying at university per capita than any English-speaking Caribbean country. Terry, share with us, um, what are some of the things that you would have liked the revolution to have accomplished um, that we still have not done so today? I think, again, the short time that the revolution lasted was difficult to accomplish all of the things that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Just alluded to some of them that we never were able to do. But certainly in the, in the four and a half years, we must say that the emphasis that was placed on, on education, the emphasis that was placed on, on health care, the emphasis that was placed on agriculture, and the, the main pillars of the economy. Um, they were now beginning to take root um, among the, the population. In addition to that, the whole question of the participatory democracy that was, that was developing. Again, Chester mentioned it. The, the village councils, the parish councils, the zonal councils, the mass organizations of women, of workers, of youth, and students. And the involvement of all of these people in building the country, the volunteerism, you know, one thing that bothers me every day when I see it is debushing and having to pay for debushing. There's nothing that, that I, I abhor more than, more, than, more than that when I see it. I mean, I understand the context in which it is being done now, the social safety network and whatever they want to call it. But these are things that we did voluntarily in the period of the revolution. Mm -hmm. And what that just are, went out of the, 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 the window. Speaking of going out of the window, what are some of the things that were extinguished, as it were, or abandoned with the demise of the revolution that you look back now and say, why did we? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is agro-industries. I mean, how could you have a functioning plant, a plant that produced such high-quality goods that you export into the outside world? plant, again, that gave farmers power that they never had before, which encouraged them to go to the land and produce as much as they could because they knew that there was a ready market, and that ready market now was going to contribute to uh, the development of the economy that, that we had at the time. 
and you just sold that when you came, you came into office? Sold it to somebody, you know, as if that didn't matter and up to now we, we cannot. Who then shut it down, shut down the actual production. Yes. And bought in powdered, powdered pre-mix <laughs> and then put it in a bottle and put it in a can. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, you, you, sh you shut it down, right? you sold it. Sold it off to a sold Jamaican, it off. A Jamaican And people. up to now we, we cannot raise our heads again since that time. Nobody has been brave. I mean, people have tried, but it has never been successful as it was during the period of the revolution. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, Chester, that, as you reflect, was extinguished um, with the demise of the revolution? Well, that sense of national pride in being a Grenadian. Um, in those days, wherever you went in the world, and people learned that you were from Grenada, I mean, they just... The, the kind of respect you got, the fact that Grenada was in the news internationally, the fact that Grenada was able to provide passports so that people from the ANC under apartheid could travel to different parts of the world. Um, you, you know, that pride that you felt, um, it, it's missing. We've sort of fallen off the map. Let me ask you this, sir, because this might be a difficult question. Why did the revolution end? It's a good question. And um, to be frank with you, I'm contemplating my memoirs. And maybe the... I we can have you, a preview. I may give you, I may give you my own view, um, which the fortuitousness of time that I have been fortunate to enjoy. Chester, I don't believe you're telling me Comrade Chester Humphrey has turned into a capitalist and tell me I'll have to buy the book in no, order to learn your thoughts. No, I, that's your interpretation. I never told no, you I'm so. I say I hope you're not telling no, me no, this. No, 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 I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying that it's for the same reason. Mm -hmm. It's for the same reason. I had a discussion with an individual of National Heroes. Right, and um, I'm, I'm when gonna, I express, I'm gonna get, when I'm gonna I get to a national when I, hero. When I eh? express my view mm -hmm. on national heroes, that individual was shocked, and it's for the very same reason. Okay, so well, I hope you're not I, gonna adopt like my to, questions would, on national national heroes. I, I wouldn't have want to. Um, I wouldn't want to give you my view just at the moment. Right, I, I hope I have the fortunes of a longer life. So some way down the road, you know, but I have my own, okay. uh, let, me, let me be clear, I have my own view and understanding of why the revolution went the way it did. Okay. And it has absolutely nothing to do, and let me be clear, I reject the theory that the revolution collapsed because of the way it took power. Okay. All that ash, nonsense. Nope. I, don't, I don't subscribe to that at all. I don't care whoever is advocating, it's absolutely false. No problem. That's my view. Let me get on to Gloria on, on this one. Why do you think we moved away from some of the things that seemed positive gains of the revolution? Um, you know, we, we spoke, for example, of the agro-processing. Why, as a country, did we give up on that? I, I am tempted to tell you we have moved away at all. Mm -hmm. We moved away from this, the, the, from certain, from a certain perspective. Let's say the government perhaps may have moved away because they were not perhaps state owning the agro processing industry. But there are a lot of people in Grenada who are doing agro process. But, but where, where I'm, where I'm going here, we're talking too. 40 years later, we had it, we abandoned it, and we're starting over now as cottage industries. I mean, and that's where I'm going. Why did we abandon in your, in your mind, as opposed to developing and then probably even privatizing? Let's put it this way. We're looking at two concepts. One where you are using people to do something, that they want to do, and the other way, the state is establishing a factory to do something. Mm -hmm. So, state-owned and agro-industry was successful. The factory down in Frequent Air was, they, they, they was state-owned. But there were little people all over the island, and still are, 
who are doing things in their kitchens. And, but the problem with this is that we cannot achieve economies of scale, and therefore well, the benefits well, of it nationally is, is, is probably I don't small. Like to, I do not like to, let's put it this way, look at La Grenade Industries. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a successful agro-processing um, industry? Absolutely is. Absolutely is. Yeah, but because, because it has limitations it's not isolated. and capital, but it, of course it has limitations and capital. And here again is why the marketing board and the PIG concept was set up, All right? Um, to, in other words, the state by its reach can do certain things that, you know, we have a very underdeveloped entrepreneurial class in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and therefore, it requires, we're not a huge country, we're a small population, and therefore, the impact of the state uh, as, uh, uh, and the economic levers that it can think to get development and so on. I mean, whole sections of our agro-industry, our, our commercial production of agricultural products have declined. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been wiped out because of new trading arrangements. Our banana industry has been completely wiped out. Um, um, because of lack of planning and because of other issues, we have significant decline in our produ cocoa production. We've not recovered really um, okay. since Ivan from Nutmeg. There has been no significant attempt to do that, um, and no plans on the way to do it. So and that what about Juve? Yeah, but that's still at a very. It's not. Um, it's not it's just. Still, it's it's still, not. People. It still, people abroad in in the Caribbean are asking to send Juve to them. It's a delicious drink, and Grenadians are using it. Yeah, but to what scale? That's the point. Uh, the, uh, is, is the question well, is to what scale? Well, nobody really sat down to evaluate. But that's the point. I think. And I think the, that's that's the point. In in, in that <laughs> we. Point so making. we have the farmers, cocoa farmers. Out of Victoria, um, doing an ex excellent product, and I tell everyone, I um, hope the other producers aren't angry with me, about Juve, right? Whether we're talking it as a dark chocolate, the cocoa powder, etc. But you just made a point, Gloria. Everyone is asking you to send Juve to them. It should be on the shelves in their supermarkets. In other words, 40 years on, we ought to have been better at exporting these excellent products that we are producing. And we still seem not to be able to get that done. I, I, I can go on the shelf in a supermarket and buy a McCormick nutmeg powder. I mean, it's highly expensive. I think it's $32, I think, for a small tin. But what are we doing with our shelves having McCormick nutmeg powder? Mm -hmm. Because we have free trade. And, 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 and that, that's a fact. And while we certainly would want to discourage free trade, um, one of the things, and maybe the legacy of the revolution, is eat what you grow, grow what you eat. And that philosophy may have kept McCormick off of the shelves. What, what do you think? Well, well, I would never even know about McCormick <laughs> because, Chester, I don't know how you could look for that. No, because I shop. I all oh, good I for you. Groceries. But I go, on, I go on the Esplanade, and the lady who sits there with her nutmegs and all of that, and I buy a packet of nutmegs. Well, that's where I buy two, but I'm just telling you mm -hmm. that on the shelf, in our supermarket is a McCormick product of nutmegs. But let me, let, me, let, me also, let me also ask a national transportation service. Because you know, as we look at the things that, that we had then yeah. and we no longer have now, a national transportation service, are we being hurt as a people Absolutely. without a national transportation Absolutely. service? Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes, it, makes it makes the cost of doing business exorbitant. Hotels have to know pump us significant amount of money because their operations are 24-7, right? And workers have to get to work. And, 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 and because it's privately owned, deregulated, with no regulations, really, people work when they feel, or they work only in the most profitable time. So the absence of a national transport service, and uh, no, no matter what part of the world you go, Transportation is usually a state function. Mm -hmm. You will have private transport, but mass transit, even if you have sections of mass transit that may be owned by uh, um, a, a, a private private public arrangement, but essentially transportation mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a state function. Let me the, also the mention York. one of my pet peeves. Yeah. Grenada is the only Caribbean island that I know 
that there isn't a public system to bring children to school. That's right. That's correct. But it was just some use during Gary's time. You know? And that's the point I'm making. Why have we abandoned and, these correct. things? That's the theme. It was introduced during his time. They had the big yellow school buses. What happened? You see, the, the governments of the day, after the collapse of the revolution, in the attempt to distance themselves so far away from the revolution, would have contributed to that. So all of the good things that the revolution did, they dismantled, they dismantled it. That was, that was the whole concept of, you know. You, you had to go to what you call capitalism and privatization and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but that, that, that is, to that's show a, that you're not communist. Well, I don't know. They, 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 they just tried to dismantle revolution. everything that the revolution did, whether they were good or whether they were bad. Bad or indifferent. And, and that is the, the problem we have today, the, the, the failure to have embraced many of the, the, the programs of the revolution that benefited people. Yeah. The, the transport, the, the they kept some things because I think they had no choice. But the main things, you know, like the yeah, national yeah. transport system. Would you, would you believe? Agro industry. All mm -hmm. of these, they would just you, abandoned them. Would you believe, mm -hmm. Terry, a product of our secondary school system, right? Who could have done medicine in any part of the world, whether it's in New York or wherever? He went to Cuba. And you know, when he came back, they prevented him from working. Dozens of ordinary Grenadian children of the poor who were studied in Cuba in medicine could not practice here. Terry can tell you how much months or years he spent unable to. In other words, the atmosphere here, set up by the then Blaze and them, right? It was an atmosphere of retribution. Right, so not, no, no time was spent in trying to figure out what was best for Grenada, right? Okay, this was done by the PRG, shut it down, close it down. Interestingly though, they passed a law to regularize all the laws passed by the PRG. <laughs> That's one of the major contradictions, yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, yeah? it is apparently time for a second break. So viewers, we'll be right back and continue with the active discussions. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today, Digicel Plus. Climate change is real. Bringing hotter days and less rain. Less rain means less water. So it's crucial for us to conserve water at home. When washing my vehicle, I use a bucket with rainwater that I have stored. This is how I save water. What are you waiting for? Grenada, get ready. A new season of the Grand Lake Debates is coming. Informative, impromptu, bright young minds, sparking powerful ideas. The Grand Lake Debates. The Grand Lake Debates will be broadcasted on GBN TV, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., Sundays at 4 p.m. Broadcast begins Saturday, October 7th. Tune in. Do you have muscular pain that no one can find a solution for? Are you tired of taking meds for joints and other pains? Hills and Valley Medicare Center on Grenville Street, St. George is here to help you heal. We will help you map a path to your full recovery. Visit us Monday to Saturday for a consultation with our on-site doctor, physiotherapist, and massage team. You will be glad you did. Our Medicare Center, a proud member of the Hills and Valley group of companies. On the hilltop or in the valley, we are with you wherever life takes you. Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Your health is our business.
Welcome back, viewers. Um, we're into our last 30 minutes, so it's going to be rapid fire because you see how the conversation's been going. Um, Terry, let me ask you this. Do you believe that the probably divisive culture and uh, that we have existing now, certainly in, within Grenada's politics, um, was born out of the yes or no mentality that we saw post-revolution. In other words, the revolution, Chester mentioned it, the revolution did this, that means it's bad, so we're doing something else. Uh, we're gonna just dismantle whatever was done before. Um, and that legacy seems to live on. I mean, why is that? <laughs> That's a very difficult one to answer, you know. I mean, people, a different um, since democracy has, has been restored there's a level of tribalism that, that has been developing in the politics of Grenada where you know it's either yellow or it's green mm -hmm. you know and if you're not for this person um, I'm not speaking to you or I'm, I'm not to say to you and, and that, that kind of thing let me ask you this uh, um, I would argue that people between the ages of 50 to 60 so yourself and Gloria have offered yourselves as candidates in elections Chester shied away from doing so but yet still we see even up to today there are very few individuals between ages 50 to 60 actively involved in Grenada's politics those who would have been born let's say 1963 to 1973 within that period and do you believe it was because of the demise of the revolution and their witnessing of the nature of the demise that they are now staying clear of politics so we have those from the 70s who continue on and we have well the new breed with like this new NDC administration but there's a cohort there that just seemed to to have been absent from uh, Grenada's politics. I, I think you're correct in, in, in a sense because the divisions that were created in, in that period where people were so actively involved in, in, in participating in, in, in the politics of the, of the day. Um, when the implosion came, people didn't really want the revolution to come to an end, but it came to an end. And one of the ensuing factors is the fact that Americans came in with a psychological operations unit and told you, don't ever go down that, that route again. So they played a part in terms of you know, influencing the psyche of the Grenadian population. Would you say that we still have people walking around with PTSD um, from the October 19th, October 25th, uh, 25th event? Oh, there are people who have never recovered from it. And there's still a lot of unanswered things. You remember the bodies of the remains of, I mean, the remains of the, 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 the bodies of the people who died on October 19th still have not been recovered. Mm -hmm. So some of the families are still in mourning. They, they have not um, gotten closure for that particular e event up to this point. So it means that, you know, the hurt and, and the, the desperation that took place in, in that period has followed us right through for the last 40 years. The, the, when we, we talk about October the 19th, um, the, the, the wounds are still very open. I mean, it's, again, you, you, you free people. They're still in mourning. They, they, they haven't forgotten it. It's not something that they, they've put behind them as yet. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that division is still there. Um, we go back to, again, the fact that Gary was overthrown uh, by, by revolution or by force, as some people put it. And the, 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 the Gary's are, they, they are empowered again because, you know, Gary came back and, you know, people gravitated towards him again. And so that division has continued from, from, from since then. It's, I mean, it's, it's a nuanced kind of thing. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to really decipher. Mm -hmm. But that division came about, again, we had to go back to the Gary era and, and the divisions in that period, the NGM um, struggles against Gary. And then the whole question of how the, the, the revolution imploded with Morris now being put on the house arrest and all of that, so it created deep divisions in the society um, who are Kodites, who are Bishopites, and then that carried on again into Just who is like, NNP and who is NDC and, and, and that Just kind of let thing. Let me bring in here. Are we at a point at or approaching a point where we can have honest conversations about what transpired during the revolution, what brought about the demise of the revolution? Um, I think, you see, in, in these matters, it's not like putting on a light bulb. 
It's either on or off. It's either light or darkness, right? Um, that's not how these things work. Um, the, 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 the demise of the revolution and the way it happened was so dramatic, so deeply painful, right? Um, caught the mass of the population totally by surprise because they didn't understand or know what was going on. Um, as far as they're concerned, um, the person whom they had bequeathed the sovereign power to was Morris. They didn't care for anybody else, all right? Um, and, and the way in which, um, the, and, and you have to understand the role of the bishop family, because remember, Morris lost his father, eh? and he lost his father because of the political and engagement in the in the struggle, and then Morris has come down from a family line that traces all the way back to Fedo, and so on. So you have all those connectivities. Um, so we are getting there. It's and 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 is it's it that we have too many players who are still alive and might be embarrassed about their roles for us to have an honest well, that conversation? Well, that could be a, that could be that could be a factor. That mm -hmm. could be a factor. But you know, in these matters, time. In these matters, we're 40 time. years on and we're not getting any younger. And people like me who are children, we would want to know. Yes. Our lives were significantly I, I, impacted. No, no, I, I understand that. But as it is, time. Okay. Um, what are some of the aspects in terms of the legacy of the revolution that we seem reluctant to address? And I think you, you alluded to them, Gloria, some of the things that we, when we speak revolution, we don't necessarily want to address this. We don't necessarily want to talk about that. What are some of the things that pop, pop to mind? One of the things that I, I, we talked about it in the break is the role of the Central Committee. I don't think Grenadians understood how powerful that Central Committee was. And when the Central Committee took a decision, it was written in stone. To me, the Central Committee was more powerful than the Cabinet. And if you didn't abide by the decision taken by the Central Committee, you get what happened to Morris. Okay. House arrest. Let me let me just ask this um, because I know we quickly yeah, run out of time. Time on and that question. That's fine. Um, one of the things, the failure as a people, irrespective of which other way you stand, the failure to recognize that Grenadian soldiers lost their lives in battle. You may disagree that the battle was a just one for them. You may have support and describe what has happened as a, what you call it, a rescue mission. You may describe it as a, not an invasion, but a, intervention. an intervention. The fact of the matter is that there was a military engagement in which Grenadians lost their lives. Mm -hmm. And we have built not a single monument not done anything at the level of the state to recognize those Grenadians who lost their lives, including civilians who lost their lives when the Americans misbombed the mental hospital. Mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's have this so, conversation. So On June 19th, no, no, let, let, me, let me just yeah. go this, because June 19th, during the revolution, was a celebration of significant, was not, not just the labor movement, but significant individuals. June I, 19th? June 19th, yes. during the revolution, but, like that was Butler, right. etc. Yeah, but let it. Right. For the first time in 2023, we attempted to have a National Heroes Day. And I'm saying attempted to have because we have not named any National Heroes as yet. My question to you is, is it appropriate to choose October 19th and what October 19th means for Grenadians as a Heroes Day? No, no. Well, if I may answer quickly, no. I, I, I think, I think, I think um, that has not been, wasn't properly thought out um, and needs to be revisited um, by, by the administrative arm of the state because you are dealing with two fundamentally contradictory concepts. Because a hero, first of all, is an individual who should unite the state. 
in the same way as how the Queen is representative of the unity of the United Kingdom and is treated that way in the symbolism, a national hero is, is, is a uniting force that brings the people together on the basis of something that that hero would have done that fundamentally altered the course of history, right, um, for a people. No, you can't have a hero's day where you are celebrating the life of your heroes and at the same time, the most mournful the most traumatic uh, collective experience of the Grenadian people was October 19th. The two things you can't be celebrating, so they're contradictory. But I don't, as, as I say, it's not fatal. It is not fatal. It's not a fatal mistake and can be corrected. Because I think, I, I take my hat off to the, this government for recognizing October. It, it is not a statement of whether they support Morris or not. It's a statement which says, for such a traumatic event, that has occurred in our history, that has shaped Grenada going forward from the time it occurred. You, you know, because, let, 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 me, let me be clear, the only time that the leader of a social process was executed was Fedor, and the British executed him. Well, no, they didn't get Fedor, he escaped, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that's the only second time in our history that you have a leader and I, I don't know that it's, this has never happened in the English-speaking Caribbean. This has sent shockwaves, not just throughout the Caribbean, but the world. And I think the government has done, this government has done the correct thing in recognizing the day. It is, as I say, it is not a blessing of the day, right? But just to recognize that this fact has occurred, right? People have lost their lives. Whether you supported Morris or not, the fact is quite a number of people lost their lives. And on that day, right, Grenada must pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the decision to recognize it means to me. Right? And it is not a partisan thing. It's not a green thing or a yellow thing. So I went to the park, and I will go to the park every October in the same way as I go when there's independence. Right? It is not, yes, Gary got independence. Yes, there were some issues and marches and blah, 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 blah. But the fact of the matter is, it is one of our calendar points, and every nation has it. You think the American Revolution was all singing church hymns? People died in their revolution, right? Yet, America's day is celebrated. Gloria, your, your, your thoughts on this? Um... I understand what is intended, but I think that it might turn out to be called Morris Bishop D. Because so much emphasis was placed on Morris Bishop. So are you suggesting that it was not necessarily as a National Heroes Day, it was not appropriately celebrated as National Heroes Day, and we may still be wanting for a National Heroes Day? Well, they haven't named the heroes yet. But the fact remains is, you can't say that they wouldn't name Morris as one of the heroes. But it seemed to me, I looked at it on television, and it seemed to me that's what was coming up all the time, that this is Morris Bishop's day. Mm -hmm. And can we celebrate, let's assume, because um, Chester mentioned watershed moments, 1951 social revolution by Gary, independence by Gary. Can we celebrate Gary as a national hero on Morris Bishop's Day? You see, that's the problem. That's the problem. And I, as I said to you, I said to someone, and this is my view, um, and um, I own in it. I'm, I'm owning it. I'm saying it. I think, my view. Um, for the announcement of a national hero, and a national hero should embody the nation, and we should try as much as possible not to perpetuate division. My view. On this announcement, I would name neither Gary nor Morris. Right? I believe we have to go deep into our history deep into our history for a significant act that is so great, so profound, and I could find no other, no other occasion in our history than the 1795 revolution led by Fedor in which he abolished slavery 40 years before the British Act of Parliament. Um, here is an individual engaged in a 
deep revolutionary struggle. Granted, he was a French planter, etc., etc., and he himself had slaves. And it was the trigger as to who would run the church or take over the church between the British and the French and who blah, 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 blah. But the fact of the matter is that he freed his slaves and other slaves as well because, you know, the Federalists took all of Grenada except just the tongue of St. George. Uh, they, they were stopped at the St. John's River, right? And it, it ultimately they executed the governor, as you recall, mm -hmm. right? But I think that that was such a profound act. And notice, we know very little about Fedor. We have always been taught to forget our history and forget ourselves. And this is why today, it's not perchance that nothing is spoken of about the revolution. This is perchance nothing is taught about the 1951 revolution because the British, the European colonialists who enslaved our parents and set up a world order that has kept us in perpetual poverty have always taught us how to forget ourselves. So if you look right now, there is not a single statue, there is not a single postal stamp of any Grenadian on it. But you could find a Grenada postal stamp with Elvis Presley. Well, um, I hope that that will change, and, and this I is hope it will important change. because we have to stop blaming the colonial powers and start taking charge of our own destiny. True, but mental conditioning is not something that you get let rid me, of. Let me, let me come to you, Terry, and, and bring you in here. Will we ever see a national museum? which has artifacts from the revolution. And I'm not only speaking of agro-processing, I'm speaking of our armored cars. Um, not armed to fire, by the way. But, but the, the legacy of the revolution, and for us to be able to reflect upon those, would we ever see that? And, and if we do have to get them back, because I um, was made to understand they were taken out of Grenada, well, who leads that appeal? There's it's 40 years on, who leads that? There's the whole point. It, all of it has been taken out of Grenada, even including many of the documents that we had. So you can find all of those in archives outside of Grenada, and nothing inside here. I've never seen an armored card here after, after 1979. I saw a number of tractors that the Cubans used on, in the building of the international airport somewhere in Point Saline in the back there that were left to rot. So I have called again for a national museum to be established where we can really document that particular period. And maybe all we have now is just maybe some some books and, and, and leaflets and that sad. kind of thing, mm -hmm. which is which is sad because, you know, I could, I can remember in, in in 1983, just at the time I was going back to Cuba, I was here on vacation, and the entire Tantine field was filled with. Equipment. <laughs> Equipment. <laughs> Tractors, Tractors all trucks, <laughs> all kinds of things. I can't see relics of even one here in Grenada. And I, I've, I've always they wondered about that, that, that. They were put on a badge by the American military yes, and dumped. That you just took all of these things all, all out, of, out of the country, things that could have been used. Just so, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, because I'm, we're speaking about who will lobby, because I want us to move forward. And I want us to know what took place in the past as we move forward so our children are knowledgeable of our past. Who would lobby for the declaration of the location of bodies of those who were killed October 19th in particular. Who will lead that lobby? Well, we have been doing that. We have been doing that over yeah, the years. We've been doing it for 40 years. Well, you've been doing it for 40 years. Yes. Who will accomplish this, I will rephrase. Well, well I don't know who will accomplish it until the, the people who are involved will come forward and, and, and give us that kind of information. The, tr the truth of the matter is that um, this requires state actors. All right? This requires state actors. I mean, with all Terry's efforts, and I mean, he's th I mean, I take my hat off to Terry, his perseverance and so on. Quite often, I would say in the rain alone, but he has achieved what many of us could not achieve just by sheer perseverance, right? But I think at this level, state actors, right? So un unless we have a state administration that is willing to go directly to Washington and ask the Americans, look, come clean on this issue. Because the Americans recovered the bodies. The Americans did the forensic analysis and they knew, they knew who, whose remains was who. 
No, I fail to believe. I fail to believe, and I know I'm saying something that'd be controversial, that in the same way as it said, that letters of invitation were sent to the Americans to come in by the then head of state, I fail to believe that the Americans will dispose of those bodies and the head of state wasn't told what happened. L let me ask you this, because... But yeah, it requires a state actor. But let us, but it was all bodies. The question, because we normally focus on the Mars Bishop, Jacqueline Kreft, and others who died. But other folks died. Why won't their bodies return to their families on October 20th? You're asking me a question which I can't answer. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 I didn't sit in the place where those decisions were made. I yeah. don't know. Okay. My understanding is, yes, some of those, well, I, I'm not sure, uh, so let, let me not see. I don't know. Okay. Um, Gloria, can we get past? Can we heal? Can we truly move forward as a people? Can we rekindle that sense of patriotism and kinship without having answers to some of these questions? And the question you're really asking is, can we forgive? because forgiveness is a very big thing. And there are people who would forever carry with them the burden of not knowing where their loved ones are resting in terms of their bodies. You know, when your family die and you put them in the cemetery, you have a tombstone and you put flowers and on November the 1st, you light candles and all of that. But they would never be given the opportunity of doing that because they don't know. Mm -hmm. So this business of forgiveness is going to take a lot of time. There's forgiveness and there's forgetting. Forgiveness and forgetting. They will not forget ever, I think. But they could forgive. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I think, think it could be rekindled, you know. Um, maybe in, in time, um, as we say always, time heals um, all wounds. Mars Bishop and people like him come one, once every 300 years. You better, we could only you hope. You better believe that. We could ho only hope that somewhere in our not too distant future, We'll have that kind of leader who could galvanize that kind of support among the people and who can bring that kind of healing. Uh, again, we're too tribal in this country right now. We, we, again, we either green or we yellow, and we, we, we become so, so hostile to each other. Um, we have to learn from the lessons of the past, and we cannot continue like this because going down that road again, you know, with this kind of division that we have now is is, is not in, in the best interest of the country and, and going forward. Well, you can't develop a, you can't develop the country if you're going down that road. Exactly, you can't. Mm -hmm. So can't. hopefully, in time, we can get that kind of leader or, or leaders who would be able to bury the differences, who would be able to reach out to people and, and try to, to, to create that kind of healing that the country needs at, at this particular point in time, and which would, would again, help the country to go forward, you know, bring back the, thing, the, the whole concept of volunteerism again, motivate the young people. I'm going to ask you to, to, ask you to young give people. a, I'm going to ask you to give a closing comment as you, uh, no, you, right. you go ahead, go right. ahead, so, and, and also add your closing comment. Right, so again, this whole concept of volunteerism, trying to reach the young people who, in, in my opinion, at this, at this point in time, are leaderless. They, 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 they don't have the kind of political will, they don't have that kind of commitment that I have seen among my generation in, in the time that I was growing up. I don't know if a lot of it was killed again during the revolution, um, when it imploded and when a lot of young people came out, those were the ones that, who actually came out on that day. They led that struggle to free Morris. And the present generation, maybe because of the influence of the Americans, um, when they came in, the whole question of 
the cell phone, the social media, and all of that, that have taken root in the country, if we can find a way to use that same thing in terms of galvanizing support among the youth again and motivating them and encouraging them in, in terms of nation building, getting back to some of the examples of the revolution, which are still relevant today. The programs of the revolution are still relevant. And if we can have a government also embracing that without necessarily talking about ideology and all of that, um, which is one of the things I thought Morris was doing quite well, you know, bringing the, 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 the programs to the, to the people, making them understand this is what we're all about. It's not about ideology, it's more about nation building, it's all about getting you involved, it's doing something that we never did before. And uh, again, even though they don't like the, the, the whole co concept of participatory democracy as we saw it, but something that is similar to that, that will get people involved on a daily basis to understand the, the, their worth, to understand the value in nation building. If we can have a government that, that embraces the programs of revolution, the social programs especially, and, and goes back to that, you know, and motivate people, I think we could, we, we could turn things around. I'm always optimistic about my country because I know we did it before, and I think we can do it again. Okay. Um, Gloria, I'll give your final comments. Uh, I think we have to keep talking. The, the conversation has to be kept alive. There are too many people who want to sweep it under the rug and say, well, that gone, we're not talking about that. Mm -mm. Because it's gonna be festering there. People must come out and, and talk. Regardless of what they want to say, talk. And this is one of the things that people don't realize how free we are in this country of Grenada when people can pick up the telephone and talk. I listen to many of the talk shows on GBN, on Shaggy, on wherever else it's happening. And we have that and we must treasure it. Our ability to say what we feel without libeling and slandering people. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jess? Well, what can I say? Um, I think um, we're going to be 50 years as an independent nation. Um, that's a young nation. Um, we, we have made mistakes. Um, I think all of these different um, experiences will help to shape us. Um, the question is how do we learn those lessons? to avoid the mistakes that we made and to perpetuate those things that are positive and from which we have gained a lot, all right? Um, and it, again, it, it takes time, you know, this is life has taught me, it takes time, you know? I, I am certain that um, if we were here, imagine this was 1984. I don't think you could have found a setting like Terry, <laughs> Gloria, and myself. It's time. I mean, Terry and I have always had a civil relationship, notwithstanding whatever differences we have. And again, I believe that was a conscious effort, both on Terry's part and my part. I mean, simply because we were in the same Sunday school class. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a shocker now. So, Chester was in Sunday school. Oh, yeah, I was in Sunday school. Yes, yeah, so I tell you all, I used to, I used to spend the collection in Ms. Uh, Mackenzie's shop. <laughs> <laughs> sat on the same bench. Um, so, you know, so we have a kind of fraternity there. But I'm saying it takes time. Um, as I said, this government has done something. But don't forget the Tillman Thomas government of, nine, of, two, of, of um, 2008 also did something. They named the airport after Morris Bishop, and they named the highway going down there after Morris Bishop. So Tillman, in his own way, made his own contribution towards national healing. As I said, don't expect national healing to come like how you turn on the lights. It happens progressively over time, right? And what I would say is, um, finally, is that we just need to be tolerant. 
tolerance means, tolerance doesn't mean agreement. It just means that you accommodate the views as expressed by somebody else. You don't have to agree with them, but, but the language that you use to disagree has to be a progressive language, not a division of hate and spite and, you know, demeaning, and you know, and shouting at each other and so on, you know. Um, you know, and again, people may say, but what, what Chester, what, <laughs> you see, time. 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 I tell you one thing, when a certain major actor in all of this can come up to me and say, hi, how are you doing, my favorite Garyite? I feel comforted in feeling that we are healing. Yeah. Okay. This is Gloria Payne Banfield, Dr. Terence Mara Show, Mr. Chester Humphrey. Thank you so very much for joining us and sharing this evening. And to you all viewers, likewise, thank you wherever you were, whether it was at home, in your bars, etc., for being with us over the last 93 minutes. Um, tolerance, patriotism, building upon the positives is the only way we are to truly move forward. I'm your host, Colin Dow. It's been a pleasure. Take good care. See you next time. Godspeed. Colin.